So a lot of people have been using this software called Zoom recently, mostly for doing meetings and school lectures remotely, but there's some serious privacy and security concerns with this app. First off, I don't really understand why everyone is flocking to an application like this. I hadn't even heard of this application before I began doing research for this video. And it turns out that they just did their IPO about a year ago. So they're kind of the new kid on the block in terms of video call applications. And this is the only reason that I can come up with for why Zoom blew up more than all the other meeting applications during this time of quarantine. Because that's just how the normies are, right? They just like the shiny new thing. They just want it because it's new and because everybody else is using it. Classic herd mentality. But like most new software, it's got a lot of problems. And it's actually had problems since before Zoom even did their IPO, which are being exacerbated now because of the sudden influx of normies that are using the platform. So the first major problem was discovered in December of 2018. Zoom's application had a vulnerability on all of the desktop applications, so that's Mac OS, Windows, and Linux, that would allow someone who isn't even a meeting attendee to hijack the meeting and become the host of it. And when you're a host of one of these meetings, you have some pretty spooky abilities, like you can remotely enable somebody's microphone or webcam. You can remotely send keystrokes to their computer and you can share their screen. This effectively means that Zoom was functioning as a remote access Trojan for anybody who knew how to exploit this vulnerability. Then in July of the next year, there was a vulnerability that allowed websites access to the webcam on MacBooks because the macOS version of Zoom installed a web server that would take requests that a standard browser wouldn't. And of course, Zoom didn't give anybody a real warning or notice to the users who installed it that a web server would even be running on their Mac. I mean, even if they did, do you think most end users that are using Zoom, because this is, this is something designed for normies, so it has to appeal to the lowest common denominator. Do you even think if you put in a checkbox during the installation process, like, hey, is it okay if Zoom runs a web server on your computer? They don't know what that means. They, they think that it's like them having their own website or like their own Facebook page or something like that. So it's it's just total garbage. And what's worse is that this web server would remain uh, left behind even after Zoom is uninstalled. And the web server could just be used to reinstall Zoom without any user intervention. So Zoom went from just being a remote access Trojan in 2018 to a persistent remote access Trojan in 2019. And then in 2020, it's been revealed that Zoom's privacy policy glows brighter than the CIA and the ATF having a laser tag match at night. There's links to many of the articles on this Harvard blog, which I'll give you guys a link in the description to it, along with all of my other sources that I've showed you here. But I got this information on it if you guys want to read up for it yourselves because if I cover it all in this video, it's going to be forever. But basically, Zoom shares its data that it gathers from its users with several major companies like Google, and it gives you no option to opt out of this data share. They don't even tell you that it's going to be happening. So things only get worse from here. On the macOS version of Zoom, you don't even have to click for Zoom's installation method to work. And this is because Zoom's uh, method of installation is pretty much the same that malware uses. So it copies, um, it uses, what is it, pre-installation scripts to copy itself into the applications folder and then, uh, well, it'll do that as long as the current user is in the admin group, because if they're not, then it won't work. But this is the same thing that malware uses on the Mac OS for it to be able to run and uh, get past the, um, the box that you have to click on to install software. It's pretty much the same thing as user account control. I would show you guys, but I don't have a Hackintosh machine set up right now. 
and it's not necessarily a security flaw in and of itself, but like I said, it's the same installation method that's used by malware, and it just comes off as really dishonest. Not quite as dishonest as their end-to-end -end encryption, though, which straight up doesn't work with any of their meetings or any of their communication at all. Because what Zoom actually uses is an encryption more similar to transport layer security, where they encrypt the TCP and UDP connections with AES, kind of like you would see in an HTTPS communication when you go to a secure website. But this is in no way end-to-end -end encryption because Zoom still has access to all of the meetings, all of the audio, all of the pictures and text, anything that you ever sent over that connection once it hits their servers because they own the servers. And that's the whole point of end-to-end -end encryption is that it prevents the person who's running the platforms, who's running the servers from being able to intercept the communication. So they know what they're doing when they tell you that it's end-to-end -end when in reality it isn't. And currently there's a number of lawsuits pending against Zoom because of all of these things. Some are in regards to their privacy policy where they shared and sold data about their users to customers without anybody being able to opt out and not even telling you that they're doing it. And other lawsuits are in regards to some of the more severe security issues like the users being able to access each other's emails, contact info, and links, LinkedIn profiles uh, without giving the user any heads up that it's happening, without even giving them an option to consent to it or not. And that's why the U.S. government has banned the use of using Zoom by government officials because of all these security flaws and because of its relationship with China. Big surprise there that the video call Trojan application is in bed with China and it routes many of its calls through Chinese servers even when the calling participants are in the U.S. or in another country that's far away from China. And don't believe Zoom's official explanation about this that it was all just a mistake, it was a you know programming error, or it was an error with the network engineers or whatever. No, because it doesn't even make sense geographically to route a call to China if both of the calling participants are in the USA. Like you're you're basically adding unnecessary latency and unnecessary overhead to the call. It it just doesn't make sense unless you want to send it through the Great Firewall so that it can be inspected and stored for later use by the Chinese government. So if you haven't figured it out by now, you shouldn't use Zoom, all right? Use Signal, uh, Yami, Jami, however you say it. Hell, even Skype or Google Hangouts would be better at this point because at least those programs don't actively try to be malware.